Hey everybody, this is John Hope Bryant. Uh, here I'm the founder of Operation Hope and Bryant Group Ventures, uh, author of Love Leadership and How the Poor Can Save Capitalism, the new way to lead in a fear-based world. Um, today, uh, I'm talking about a topic that applies to everybody. Uh, quitting is unacceptable, yes, but something that I learned this morning when I was at a physical, uh, it really devastated me when I heard it. Uh, the attendant who was uh, with me, and by the way, you know, those who are, who are uh, coming in live, you can add comments below. I can see your comments. I will respond to your comments. Hey, David Thomas uh, joining and Tiffany uh, Greer joining. Uh, I'll see your comments. I'll uh, respond to them. We're picking up a real a big following on this series, so thank you very much. I'm honored uh, by that. Over 125,000 uh, viewers in the first week. Pretty cool. Um, so common sense uh, realism works. So look, uh, I was at getting a, uh, I was called a, a nuclear physical this morning, a nuclear stress test for my, uh, ra uh, my road racer's license for my race car. And um, it was pretty amazing actually, uh, uh, 18 and a half minutes uh, at ultimately a 35% uh, grade, uh, sustained, no, uh, no coming back down. <laughs> and I was wiped out, it was over. But they told me I was in the top 1% uh, of all people that they see which is not bad for 50 years old. I actually feel like I'm better than I was when I was 25. But what if I had never tried, right? What if I had never decided to get a race car driver's license? What if I had told, everybody told me, oh, that's dangerous. Look, walking across the street <laughs> is dangerous. You know, you wanna, you wanna get hit by a car, go, go try to walk across the street in most cities. People can't drive, right? I mean, uh, you know, breathing uh, is dangerous, right? D you know, doing anything is dangerous. What did Benjamin Mays, the, do the mentor to Dr. King say? Uh, he said that the ultimate sin is not failure, it's low aim. The ultimate sin is not failure, it's low aim. And so I'm sitting there this morning getting my checkup and they're preparing me, putting all the dials all over my body, um, preparing me for this treadmill exercise. And she tells me, the nurse tells me, I said, what's the most devastating thing you've experience here. Don't tell me a heart attack because you're, you're, you're like Piedmont heart. So that, of course you're going to have heart attacks. My man Cosmo is sitting here with me. Of course you're going to have a heart attack. See, I accept, expect that. Uh, tell me what's the most devastating thing. And she said the most devastating thing are people who come here often for checkups, recheckups. They spend too much time here and they are afraid to die, which means they refuse to live. And it took me a minute to like, think about that. They are afraid to die. They come there all the time to the hospital. They want medicines. They want checkups. They want this. They want an insurance policy against failure. They're afraid to die, and so they refuse to live. And so, you know, all, you know, not all, many of my relatives are like, oh, be careful of that auto racing thing, that race car driving thing. You know, wait a minute, I'm on a track with seasoned professionals, some of the best athletes in the world, who are trained at the top of their skill to, to, to run at 150 miles an hour in a, you know, in a race car uh, to, to, to win, which means they don't want to hit uh, anybody else. They uh, have gone through the same nuclear tests I've gone through in a multiple a day uh, intensive training classroom. And I mean, these are some of the best drivers in the world. Uh, I'd rather be there than on the freeway <laughs> with some of these folks that I'm not sure they got a license at all. But my point is, uh, why would I not do that? Why would I not live my dreams? You know, Paul Newman got his racing license when he was 48 and won his last race when he was 82. And to the heirs of Paul Newman, thank you very much for the $100,000 you gave to Operation Hope through your, that Paul Newman has a, a, a salad dressing that he donates all his, his profits to charity, God rest his soul. But through Oprah, they gave us $100,000 and that's how I learned ultimately about him and auto racing. Okay, so I'm seeing here notes uh, uh, from David, to, uh, lo to love God is to be free of fear. Absolutely. Uh, if you're going to pray, why worry? If you're going to worry, why pray? If you're going to pray, why worry? If you're going to worry, then why pray? Literally, faith is what you do when you don't have all the facts. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I'm seeing here, uh, Roderick Cunningham, this is so real, people are afraid to live. You have to jump. Absolutely. Uh, Chioma, I hope I'm saying that right. She uh, 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 cites the Bible, I believe, Timothy uh, 1, 9, 10, says Christ has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to life through God, the gospel. Uh, yes, all that's true, but also, you know, Jesus Christ was insecure. Don't, don't get it twisted. Right? He was 
in, uh, made in man's image. He was God's child. But he said, uh, you know, if you're asking me, basically, I don't want to go talking about the crucifixion. Uh, but if you're not asking me, where do I sign? P like perfect suffering. He, he said, N you know, not my will, but thine will be done. And when he was being crucified, he said, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Right? Like, Dad, why have you, like, given me up? Even he was experiencing so much pain that he had to say, admit, this is just too much. Why? He had to question his own dad. Like, and he was the son of God. Right? And then, and then at the end, he said, forgive them, Lord. They know not what they do. <laughs> Boom. Perfect suffering. What did Dr. King say? If you don't know what you're willing to die for, you aren't fit to live. Or a more uh, practical example today of uh, that statement, uh, I would say die empty. My friend Tommy Dorch uh, said you gotta, you're going to die, die empty. Or I would say you don't know how long you're going to live, but you dang well know you're going to die. So why are we surprised about that? Why are you surprised? You go, why, we, we celebrate children coming into this world, but we are shocked when somebody who's 70 years old leaves this world. We haven't made peace with death. If they live to 70, 80, 90 years of age, celebrate them. I don't say when somebody tells me their great-grandfather or grandfather or mother who was 75, 80, 90 years old died, I don't say, oh, my God, that's horrible. I say, I'm sorry for your loss, but if there's anything resembling what you are, they have been promoted. They've gone on to a better place. We're not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. So let me give you some management, uh, uh, some management uh, uh, tools you can use to abolish fear in your life and embrace your greatness, right? And these are practical things. And the first one's from my book, Love Leadership. Life is 10% what life does to you and 90% how you choose to respond to it. I'm gonna repeat that. Life is 10% what life does to you and 90% how you choose to respond to it. What's your response going to be? Notice I said respond, not react. Remember I said on an earlier video in this series, Whenever you make a decision that's emotionally, it's going to be emotional is going to be the wrong decision. Whatever decision you make emotionally is going to be the wrong decision. When you get upset, take a breath. When you're full of fear, take a breath. Step back from it and get yourself together and respond. Don't react. Let's deal with courage. I, I wrote in the book Love Leadership that courage is nothing more than your faith reaching through your fear, displaying itself as action in your life. I'll repeat. Faith well, no, courage, I've already covered that. Courage is nothing more uh, than your faith reaching through your fear, displaying itself as action in your life. It, it, no one thinks that you are not going to be afraid. I'm not going to tell you that I wasn't afraid the first time I was on a racetrack. I was terrified. <laughs> okay? I was terrified. But I loved it. I loved the achievement. I loved that. I could do something that most people couldn't do. I mean, I, I don't know what percentage of people have a race car license, a race car driver's license, a full competitive race car driver's license, but I'm sure it's like, you know, in the singular percentages in the world. And I, and I know I've got one now, right? Not a mini-me license, a full competitive license. And I, you know, I did that, right? I overcame my fears. And now it's like when I'm driving a race car, first of all, you can't multitask. And my brain is very active. So I need something that's going to settle me. Golf does not do it for me. I'm, my mind is going in 14 different places. I, my mind is clear when I'm in a race car. And the brain and the road and the, and, and the car are all one. It's like Buddhism. At, it's like Buddha or meditation at 150 miles an hour. I get really calm. But mastery does that to you. So, so I want you to, to, to embrace. Don't run away from your fears. Run towards them because, now get this, you cannot have a rainbow without a storm first. It's a scientific fact that you cannot have a rainbow without a storm first. You cannot even grow without legitimate suffering. Boom. So why are we running away from our problems when the only way we grow is through problems and challenges and change? I'm going to do a whole piece on loss creates leaders. Uh, another time, just going to focus on that, how loss create leaders. But today I just want to focus on, in the little time we have left on you, you achieving your greatness, you uh, just banishing fear. I mean, I don't want you to be one of these people who are in this lady's, uh, uh, you know, health clinic today, uh, whining about, I'm just afraid to die. They're dying alive. You have people who are tired at work. They're at work, but they're retired, you know, in late, long lunch, leave early. They don't want to do much. They just don't want to, they don't want to exert in themselves. But what did the Bible say? Uh, be hot or be cold. If you're lukewarm, I'll spat you out. Translation, even God is not like mediocrity. So if you're going to do something, do it with both feet. Follow your dream. What are you waiting for? There's no dress rehearsals. You don't get a second time at this life, right? 
just show up and live your dreams and don't let fear hold you back, right? You never want to have a woulda, coulda, shoulda thought in your life. And if you fail, you fall forward. There's nothing wrong with failure. There's nothing. There's just something wrong with low aim. Let me see if I did any comments here before I wrap this, uh, wrap this up. Uh, thank you for the reminder, Sheila says. I hope this has been uh, a, a good session here uh, today. I uh, think I'm going to uh, come to Daytona Beach to NASCAR, David. Uh, I might, <laughs> I might have been asked. I do road racing, but I've been I've been invited to come to NASCAR uh, several times. Byron Dees uh, says uh, JHB Jewels for Life. I hope that you guys have found this uh, useful and helpful. Uh, Bridget says jump right, jump into your dreams. I guess is what she was saying. But again, this lady this morning who did, uh, she said that she had never certified a race car driver before. And, um, and uh, she was sort of intrigued by my life, but I was intrigued by her life and her story. We all have a story. And so I asked her about her life and that's how I learned about, she was comfortable to tell me what, what this distressing story. Uh, and, and she really thought that what that lady was doing, who was afraid to live, was more dangerous than what I was doing. You can die alive because the most dangerous person in the world is a person with no hope. You are, you, you, are, you are God's child. You are amazing. You can do anything you want. It, just make sure that the only thing holding you back is not you. Live your dream. Love, peace out. Never, never, never quit. There was a great quote. Never, ever, 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 ever give up. Peace out.